Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to make amazing keto-friendly burgers. They're a lot lower in calories, have a lot less carbohydrates, and are just as good, if not better, than any other burger you've ever had. And we're gonna be doing the entire thing with our Ninja Foodie Smart XL Grill. So you ready? Let's get into this. For this recipe, we're gonna use Sam's Choice Keto-Friendly Hamburger Buns. There are a lot of options here, but these are the ones that don't taste like cardboard. Some sliced tomatoes, extra sharp cheddar cheese. We're using the extra sharp cheese because we can get away with using less cheese, which means lower calories, but we still get the same flavor. A little bit of red onion, some bread and butter pickles, green leaf lettuce, 93% lean ground beef, some low sugar ketchup, a little bit of mustard, but not just any mustard. This is Joe's Phenomenal Maple Monk Fruit Mustard Menagerie. And it must be good because I'm on the label. We got the seasoning for the burgers. This is salt, pepper, and a little bit of Epicurean truffle seasoning. You can get the Epicurean stuff at Costco, and it has truffle, Parmesan cheese, and a little bit of black garlic mixed together. It's really good. For the French fries, we're using sweet potatoes, a little bit of avocado oil, we use avocado oil because it's got a very high burn temperature. That means less smoke. And finally, the seasoning for the fries. In here we have salt, pepper, garlic, and a little bit of paprika. If you'd like to make this recipe, all the ingredients and measurements are down in the description of the video, along with the calorie count, the protein, the fat, and the carbs. Since we're only using the one machine, we're gonna do our french fries first. You can set your oven at about 200 degrees, so once we get those done, you can put them in there to keep them warm, and then we can move on to the burgers. Conversely, if you have another machine that does air frying, you can do them in those and do the burgers at the same time in your XL grill. If you have a separate air fryer or something like a Ninja Foodi pressure cooker that's got air fry capability, we have a video linked above to show you how to do the fries in that. For starters, we need to peel the sweet potatoes, so we'll go ahead and do that very quickly. Then we'll go ahead and cut these down to make fries. So you'll start by cutting it in half. Then carefully cutting each half down a little bit more. And then you'll cut these the long way to make your fries. Don't worry about making these all perfectly same size pieces because it really doesn't matter all that much. Just be real careful not to cut yourself or anything like that. Once you have your sweet potato sliced up, we're gonna throw these into a mixing bowl, put in our avocado oil, toss this around a little bit to make sure you get a nice even coating on all your fries. Then we'll throw in our herb combination. This was the herb combination that has the paprika in it. Put that in, and again, we'll toss this in here really good to make sure we get that nice and evenly coated. You don't want one piece with a ton of seasoning on it and then another piece with nothing on it because that's not gonna be good. Next, we're gonna move over to our Ninja Foodi Smart Grill. Open this up, and we're gonna be using our air fry basket, so I need to take my grill part out of here. You'll leave the main pot in, add in your air fry tray, and we're gonna pour in the fries. Be sure to distribute these evenly amongst your tray, and then you can close this up, turn on your machine, and set it to air crisp. We're gonna to wanna to have this at 375 degrees, and we're gonna set this for 30 minutes. Realistically, it's gonna be someplace between 25 and 30 minutes or so that we need to cook these for. You're gonna to need to kind of keep an eye on it yourself and decide how crisp you want your fries to be. A couple of times during this cook, you're gonna to wanna to open your machine up and stir your fries around with a pair of tongs. That way you can make sure that they cook nice and even. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. Let's check these out. And these are actually coming along really, really good. It's not gonna take the entire amount of time, so we'll just have to keep an eye on these. But we're gonna go and stir these up a little bit. If you're stirring these with tongs, be sure you have Teflon coated ones so you don't scratch up your basket. And then we continue. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes or so. And this looks just about the way we want it. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit overcooked, but that's okay. They are sweet potato fries, so they do tend to come out like that a little bit. So we didn't need that full time, which is a great reason to be keeping an eye on this. So now I'm just gonna take this basket, stick it in the oven, and we'll be able to move on to our burgers. One mistake people make about burger patties is that a lot of people think you need to add egg as a binding agent. The only reason you might need to do that is if you're putting things inside your burger that aren't the burger meat. 
That could be your herbs, onions, garlic, anything like that. Because the meat is gonna stick to the meat. The more you put in there, the harder it is for that to happen. And then you need to add that egg in there to keep everything together. A common example is meatloaf. But this isn't the meatloaf, this is hamburger. So what we wanna do is we're gonna just kinda work this a little bit to get all the meat nice and uniform. You don't wanna overwork it or anything. Just enough to get this smushed together really well. And we're gonna form our burger patties and then we're just gonna put the seasoning right on the top. This is one pound of meat, so we're gonna do four ounce burger patties. So the best way to do that is just to kind of roll this out a little bit and just try to keep everything nice and even. Just have it like that. And then we'll have this one more time. That way it'll be pretty evenly sized. And then we're just gonna form them in the burgers. And you just kind of work it around until you get that burger shape that you want. By the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. Once you got your burgers formed, we can go ahead and season them. Be sure to season them on both sides. It doesn't hurt to rub this in a little bit too. And now we're ready to grill. Before you start, be sure that you put your grilling plate in here. And then we're gonna turn our machine on, set the grill to high, and we'll just leave this at 10 minutes. Then we can go ahead and start, and we'll let this warm up. Once that's warmed up, we can go ahead and throw on our burgers. You'll notice that we're not using the probe. These are pretty thin, so we're not gonna need it. And keep in mind the amount of time that this cooks is gonna depend totally on how you like your burgers cooked. We have this set for 10 minutes, but we're likely not gonna use anywhere near that amount of time. So we'll go ahead and close this up, and we're gonna give it a few minutes, and then we'll flip the burgers. All right, it's been about four minutes, and that's looking like it's ready to flip. And we're gonna cook this for a couple of minutes on the side, and then we're gonna add the cheese for the very last part. Okay, for this last part, we're gonna go ahead and add our cheese. That way it's nice and melted by the time these burgers are done. And they're basically done already, but we really don't want them to overcook while we're getting the cheese on there. So we'll just give that about a minute or two, melt the cheese, and those burgers will be ready to plate. It's been about a minute, and look at that, that's ready already. So now it's time to get these off the grill. If you like your bun toasted, you can go ahead and put that open face down here on your grill if you like just for a minute or so, and it'll toast that up nicely, just don't forget about it there. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about Joe's Phenomenal, you can watch a couple more videos or you can check us out online at joesphenomenal.com. That burger came out delicious. It just goes to show you that you can cut calories and carbs without sacrificing really anything. If you're trying to drop a little bit of weight, this is something you definitely gotta try. If you want some more information about the Ninja Foodie Smart XL Grill, we do have an Amazon affiliate link to it down in the description of the video. We do make a small commission on everything that's ordered through those links, but it doesn't affect the price that you pay one cent. I thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your busy day to watch this video. It really means a lot to me and I can't wait to see you back again here really soon. So until that time, I'm Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.